I'd really like to start talking here about some of the uh, pipe and steel tariffs that are going on and also about the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Um, you've made your way out here to Evraz twice in the last year. Um, you seem quite proud about it. Um, the second time you showed up in July 1st, you know, you made some statements that you wanted to come out here and fight for Canadians and stand up for Canadians because on July 1st you put the counter tariffs on the U.S. Uh, manufactured goods, which was great. But for the life of me, what I can't figure out is why would you sign on to the U.S. Uh, MCA while the pipe and tariffs were still active? Why didn't you walk away? When in that part of the negotiations did you si decide that we here in Regina just weren't good enough? You're going to move on with this agreement without us and leave us behind. And then to add insult on top of it, we have this Trans Mountain Pipeline that was going to be funded 100% by private investors without a single cent of public money. Not once, not even once when you were campaigning did you ever throw out the idea that, you know, you talked here about investing in Canada. Well, never in your platform did you say you were going to go out and buy a $4.5 billion company. Like, this whole pipeline was going to get put in the ground without you spending a cent of all of our money. But here we are, you got yourself in a hell of a predicament. You pissed off the Greens, you pissed off your base, you pissed off us that don't like you, and the pipeline still isn't in the ground. You know, you know I, I, ju I just can't figure out how you're gonna get to yes on this one. It's gonna get hung up in the courts, people are gonna challenge you because now you know, you own the pipeline and now you get to say how it's going to go in. We have a national energy board that was put in place that put all these onuses on these companies to, uh, you know, meet the standards of what the people wanted. And we still can't get there. You can legalize marijuana, but we can't twin a pipeline, an existing pipeline, to the coast. You know... You, you talk about, the fellow up here, he wants to talk about balanced, balanced budgets and how you're going to deal with, you know, the money coming in and the income. Well, we're just getting hosed on our oil something terribly. Like, get this pipeline in the ground, get it out to the coast, and you're going to have a whole bunch more money that you can spend like a drunken farm wife after harvest in New York City. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, First of all, thank you, sir, for your, for your hard work in the steel industry. Uh, I know how important it is, the work that you do, the work that uh, folks do here in, in Saskatchewan and Alberta and right across the country in our oil industry, in our steel industry, in making sure uh, that we are getting our resources uh, to, uh, to markets and, and that we are growing as an economy. So I uh, recognize the challenges that these steel and aluminum tariffs uh, represent uh, to our economy, to uh, your work. And that is why we are taking these steel and, our, uh, and aluminum tariffs extraordinarily seriously. It's why we came in with countervailing uh, tariffs, uh, and thank you for your support of those, uh, on American products, which is creating pressure within the American system by uh, governors of, of Kentucky, amongst others, uh, to put pressure on the president to actually move off of those steel and aluminum tariffs. Your first question was indeed about uh, the signing of the new NAFTA deal. And should we have not gone ahead with NAFTA because of the steel and aluminum tariffs? And that was certainly a question that we had to ask ourselves and that we reflected on. Because these tariffs are hurting our workers, hurting our economy. One of the things that we've done is make sure that we are uh, supporting and putting measures in place to support companies like Evraz, but it's not just Regina. It's companies in Sault Ste. Marie for Algoma Steel. It's companies in Hamilton. It's uh, aluminum companies in BC and uh, in Quebec that are all being negatively impacted by uh, these punitive American tariffs. 
And every single conversation I've had with the President, I bring up the fact that these tariffs are not just hurting uh, Canadian workers like yourself and Canadian companies, they're also hurting American workers and American companies. And we're seeing increasing stories on that. So we were in a position where we had to reflect on do we sign a, the new NAFTA with our largest and most important trading partner and pledge to continue to look for moments to pressure the U.S. to remove these steel and aluminum tariffs? Or do we walk away from a $2 billion a day trading relationship that is hugely important for the Canadian economy? Securing NAFTA at a time of unpredictability and protectionism in the United States was a massive priority for all Canadians. And we did it, and we did it together. <laughs> Premiers of provinces right across the country, including right here in Saskatchewan, stepped up, and all across political perspectives and ideologies, we spoke with a very clear voice about Canada's priorities, about what we needed in the new NAFTA deal, and we got a good deal for Canada. And we secured our most important trading relationship. And that is not a small thing. Yes, I would have liked to have been able to convince the President to pull back the steel and aluminum tariffs before signing, but that was not going to be possible. That was very clear from the U.S. administration. So the choice then became, do we actually secure NAFTA or not? And I know here that steel and aluminum is extraordinarily important, but so are our agricultural exports, so are uh, the billions of dollars worth of trade that every part of the country does with the United States, our most important market every single day. And that is something uh, that we needed to secure. Now, it's not over, obviously, because the U.S. still has to ratify the new NAFTA deal. And we have already been working with members of Congress, with governors, with business interests who are being affected negatively by these tariffs that the President has put in, to put pressure on the President that in the process of ratification, um, they should remove those steel and aluminum tariffs. But in the meantime, we will continue to support companies like Evraz and its workers, the steel and aluminum workers right across the country, to make sure that these tariffs uh, do not adversely impact you, your livelihood, your families, and the communities that rely on. Secondly, um, the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Uh, let's be very clear. Kinder Morgan was walking away from the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Uh, they were walking away because they felt the political risks were too great. They, were, they felt that the context they were in with uh, the government of BC being opposed to the pipeline uh, and the complications they were facing around this, uh, they wanted to throw up their hands and walk away. And for me, and for all Canadians, it is an absolute priority to get our oil resources to markets other than the United States. Folks in our oil industry, in Saskatchewan, in Alberta, are suffering right now because of a massive differential in the price uh, for, uh, for Canadian oil. Because we are prisoners, 99% of our oil goes to the United States right now. And, you know, on top of that, the United States is sometimes a challenging partner to deal with. It makes sense to diversify our markets to uh, markets in Asia. So we need to get our landlocked oil resources to markets across the Pacific. The Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion will allow meaningful impacts on that. And that is why we made the decision that the federal government should take over the pipeline expansion project. Now, I am confident, and I think most people who know the oil industry are confident, that that pipeline, that as it is, makes money every single month with the existing pipeline, is going to be very valuable 
once it is completed. It is not, as you pointed out, was not in my platform that I was going to buy a, platform, buy a pipeline for Canadians. Um, but it was in my platform that I was going to grow the economy and protect the environment at the same time and do it in thoughtful, responsible ways. And moving forward on a twinned, the twinning of an existing pipeline to a well-serviced marine area in the Port of Vancouver, which also involves us investing massively in oceans protection and moving forward in partnership uh, as much as possible with Indigenous peoples is, to my mind, the way to get projects built. If you think back into history, a hundred years ago when people laid a railroad across the prairies, nobody checked with the locals. Nobody checked with the people who'd been living and stewards of this land for millennia. They just decided to put it through. Well, that was then. That is not now. Now, when we get big projects built in this country, we have to engage in partnership, in respectful dialogue, in benefit sharing, in respect and partnership with Indigenous peoples. That's the way we're going to get big projects built. We also, for Canadians across the country who are worried about future generations, about protecting our air and water and land, we also know we have to be responsible about the environment and thoughtful about the impacts on future generations. Now, the previous government, you might want to plug your ears, sir, I'm about to mention Harper again. Um, sorry, I don't mean to be quip about that. Um, the previous government had, as everyone does, a, a priority of getting our resources to new markets. But they thought the way to do that would be to minimize environmental oversight and marginalize indigenous voices that disagreed uh, with the pipelines. Thank you. Um, that fact didn't work for 10 years the pipelines weren't able to be built. We did not get resources to new markets other than the United States under the, conserv uh, under the Conservative government. We are now on track to doing that. We are now on track to do Sorry, sorry. We've got two people shouting at me on exact opposite sides of the question right now. We got exactly the except the thing. We have folks up. Okay. I'm going to respond to that question in a second. Uh, uh, but we are now in a situation where we are working with Indigenous peoples. We are working with environmental science, scientists to make sure that the impacts are minimized. And we are going to move forward in the right way. And quite frankly, the Federal Court of Appeals uh, laid out a blueprint whereby we could get the consultations right and move forward in the right way and that is what we're focused on doing. We are focused on getting our resources to new markets and doing it in the right way. That's exactly what we are going to do uh, because that's what you need, that's what uh, the, the uh, oil sands need uh, and that's what the Canadian economy needs in terms of that. So thank you very much for your question.